One of the things that people are familiar with in relation to hurricanes are the Cape Verde hurricanes. You know, those can be some that are a little more intense because they've had the entire Atlantic Ocean to span and to uh, basically build up and strengthen. And essentially, a Cape Verde hurricane is one, if you have North America over here, we'll draw Floridia. I like to call it Floridia. Then South America. Here we have England, Europe, then we'll draw the shoe of Italy, etc. And then we have Africa. And then here you have the Middle East. And then you have the Indian subcontinent, etc. And the Indian Ocean. Now, one thing to note, let me, well, before we continue, let me label this. So, North America, South America, Europe, and let's draw the fingers, Scandinavia, Africa, India, etc. Now, down over here, actually, let me use brown. Over here, we have the Ethiopian highlands. And the North Atlantic. South Atlantic. and Indian Ocean. And we're going to draw the equator right along there. Now what happens is when you have the monsoon season in India, all this moisture from the Indian Ocean wants to go this way into India. It gets uplifted by the Himalayas and creates torrential rainfall. But sometimes, some of the air will go over the Ethiopian highlands. And as we mentioned in the previous video, when you have a mountain range and air goes over it, you, you know, you, when air goes up a mountain, you form clouds. It descends on the other side of the mountain, but you create a sort of buoyancy to where it's almost like a, like a bounce, to where it wants to go down, then up, then down, then up. So it creates bands of clouds that when you look from outer space, you know, from satellite images, you're going to have rows of clouds propagating, you know, away from the mountains. So down here, the air is moving towards that direction, whereas we know in North America, in um, the synoptic environment of North America, we have air tending to most of the time wanting to move to the east across the Rockies and then across the Appalachians. Although we do have certain systems that will move from the north, others from the south, etc. But this is the general climatology. So with the wind that goes over the, um, the moisture that goes over the Indian Ocean, you create bands of clouds crossing the, uh, you know, the Saharan, uh, desert, the sub-Saharan part of Africa. And then you get to the end of Africa and you have the Cape Verde Islands over here. And a lot of times some hurricanes will form just past the Cape Verde Islands where you end up having, you know, rotation. And hurricanes do not form at the equator. They usually form a little bit further north or south latitude because you have the Earth's spin and it causes this side to spin at a different speed than that side. So um, it's just the nature of circles as things spin. So as this is spinning, you know, the Earth being curved, the equator moves a, a little faster so it creates an unevenness which is what causes part of the rotation in a hurricane. You know, it's one of the contributing factors. So the westerly waves that 
are derived from the Ethiopian highlands that traverse Africa can eventually create a tropical storm which can develop into a hurricane as it spans the equatorial North Atlantic and they tend to come this way and curve you know with the Coriolis effect and then eventually move to the right and once in a while some will actually come and make landfall in the US and they can be very devastating.